Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we'll be taking a look at the Dark Flash Dark Air, a RGB 120mm cooler that doesn't break the bank, but might twist your brain. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at the Dark Flash Dark Air RGB. This is a addressable RGB fan with a little touch of addressable RGB on the actual top of the cooler. It's a 120mm style cooler, tower, four heat pipes, usual kind of drill, what we expect to see these days. Pretty much the most popular type of air cooler on the market. So what has this got which makes it slightly different from others? Well, firstly the price, to some extent. This is very cheap to pick up from places like Banggood, AliExpress, etc. And is relatively unknown here in the UK, Canada, America, etc, etc. So Ugly Bob, one of our patrons, actually reached out and said, Mike, would you like to take a look at this for me? I want to see what you think of it. And yep, over the moon to do so. Well, at least I was initially. There is a slight downside to this, as we'll come across shortly when we go through the unboxing and also the installation process. Spoiler alert. So let's have a look at the box first of all anyway, uh, see what we get, see what is included in the kit. Then we'll go through, do an installation on my own personal rig. Why do I do this? I don't know. So this is going to be installed with a Ryzen 9 3900X and we'll uh, see how it compares with previous coolers I've been using. So box wise, as you can see, pretty nice, not a basic beige box, uh, certainly it's got a nice bit of colour to it. No real logos to it apart from the logo there for Dark Flash themselves. Moving around onto the side, so you've got the model number and the designation, so Dark Flash Dark Air, Tower CPU Cooler, pretty much more of the same as we go through the box. On this side we've got more of the specifications, so it tells you the uh, dimensions there. So it's about 128mm wide, 75mm deep, and I think it's 155mm yeah, tall. So pretty small actually, will fit into most ATX style cases. Obviously do check your case size before you order one. Moving on to the specifications, so there's actually two versions of this available. There is the addressable RGB version and the rainbow version. So effectively the rainbow version is like a fixed RGB, so it just cycles through the colours with no implementation or integration with your motherboard's addressable RGB or maybe your case's RGB hub. The addressable RGB version has a 3-pin 5-volt addressable RGB connector which comes off and then can be plugged into, again, motherboard hub, motherboard case fan hub, all that kind of stuff, or just directly to a motherboard through that 5-volt 3-pin addressable RGB header. Right, okay, so specifications of the fan itself. So they're stating 29 decibels maximum, which I call BS already because basically this room, just with the fans from the PCs and normal ambient noise, is around about 30 to 32 dB. So that means that this under full load is quieter than the room being essentially silent. So I don't believe that for a minute, but we'll certainly do some readings, see what it comes out to. I'm guessing it's gonna get up to around about sort of 45, 50 dB very very easily these type of fans generally do again it does depend where you actually measure it from if i measured the dba from out in the garden yeah it probably would hit 29 dba but i don't think realistically being a couple of foot away it should reach considerably more than that the fan itself uh, gives up to i think it's about yeah just under 70 cfm so 68 cfm and it's got a 2.52 mil h2o rating so spec wise of the fan yeah it seems okay it does say approximately 800 to 1600 RPM, plus or minus 10%. So we'll certainly see what that comes out to. And also we'll check in the ASUS software to see what the actual RPM ratings are like, whether it will go down to zero RPM or whether it kind of goes up to about 30% and then kicks in at like 600 RPMs or whatever. We'll certainly take a look at that. And obviously we'll do some temperature tests. So yeah, let's get into the unboxing. So as we open up the box, first of all, we get the uh, Fly with Unlimited. QR code which you can scan to get more information and there is a double page inside for the Intel setup. So this works with Intel 775, uh, 1136, 1151, 1200 series, etc, etc. And on the back we've got AM4, AM3 and AM2+. There is a little bit of a confusion when it comes to AM4 but we'll, uh, we'll take a look at that when we get into the, some of the mounting hardware. So next up is the actual cooler itself and it actually does look the real deal. So for around about, well, what appears to be around about 20 odd pounds from uh, Banggood and AliExpress, etc., you do appear to get quite a lot for your money. There are a lot of these kind of very similar designs on the market. We've got the Vitro V5, which you can check out up here. And also we've done other ones based around that similar sort of principle. 
Uh, some of which are good, some of which are not so good, some are uh, yeah, not worth the box they're actually shipped in. But certainly this, as it appears at the moment, does look to be pretty decent. So we've got this nice fan on the front with the opaque blades and opaque center, so that's going to give out a ton of RGB. On the sides we've got some metal springs there to hold everything in place, which is uh, not ideal, but certainly gets the job done. On the top we've got the Dark Flash logo again, which does illuminate in uh, RGB, synchronizes with the fan itself. There is a wire which runs down the central channel there, so yeah, that's all good. Finished in a very nice um, satin matte black finish, which is slightly better than a matte finish. It doesn't show up the dust and dirt and finger mitt and finger marks, that kind of stuff, so that's all good. The fans actually do have rubber pads on all sides as well to try and limit vibrations, etc. So yeah, again, another nice feature. The cables themselves do terminate, as we said, in the 5 volt 3 pin addressable RGB and also the 4 pin PWM style, so that's all good. Moving down to the base plate, so we've got four heat pipes as you can see there, so four nicely spaced out heat pipes and underneath this protective layer there is the exposed heat pipes and also the cold plate. Now this has actually been finished extremely well, it's extremely flat, very very smooth, kind of almost like a mirror like finish almost. You could certainly buff it up a little bit more to get it completely mirror like but certainly as an out of the box thing yeah it does look very very good we don't have the equipment here to kind of measure microns to see how imperfect it actually is but certainly from a, a first glance it does appear to be pretty decent this is also the area where things start to get a little bit funky so as you can possibly see from the camera angles and we we'll probably get some more b-roll as well you've got some mounting holes here either side and this is for both the Intel and the AMD mounting brackets. Now the instructions themselves which we've uh, briefly taken a look at there do give kind of differing advice on actually how to mount the rails on the side. So probably a good idea if we get the mounting kit out now and we'll take a brief look at it and I'll explain to you some of my confusions. So this is the, uh, the mounting hardware and I'm not entirely sure if there's parts missing um, or whether I'm being an idiot. There is obviously that potential, it is possible, but it does, some things just don't quite add up. So starting off, we get the, uh, the plastic, at least it appears to be quite a, a decent plastic, but certainly is plastic, a plastic back plate, which does have designations on it for the Intel sockets. So again, 775, uh, 11s, 5X, and 1366, or 55, whichever it is, I can never remember and also AM3 and AM4. So AM3, AM4 will be these kind of lugs here and the Intel ones will be the ones which are more kind of ev evenly spaced there. So it doesn't state 100% that you actually have to use this for AM3 and AM4. So potentially you could just use the existing backplate, which, okay, yeah, no problem. They haven't specifically said you have to use one or the other. So I guess you could take the option and use whichever. If you've lost your backplate, then certainly this is very, very handy. So let's take a look at the, uh, the rest of the mounting hardware. So in this little baggie we have some dark flash thermal paste. It's always nice to see. There is a set of four Intel plastic adapters, which are those ones there. There's also some push pins which go through the actual plastic. And also there's some fixing screws as well to actually attach the rails onto the cooler. So this is where it starts to get a little bit odd. So if you're using Intel, it's not a problem. You just work out which socket you need and put the pin through the back, let it sit into place, and then you use the plastic piece at the end, which has a cutout for the actual kind of metal, and it just slides into place and you lock it in, and that's what holds it in place. Absolutely fantastic. No problems at all as far as Intel systems are concerned. Where it gets a little bit weird is with the AM4 or AM3, if you do plan to use this, obviously it will need to be the other way around, so it does flip around. So we'll put it into the AM4 position. And that is essentially it. There's nothing actually holding it in place apart from a very small amount of friction. Now, from what I can see from some of the older versions of this particular fan, there are uh, colored plastic pieces which actually clip over the larger style bit for AM4, AM3. It isn't the same size as the Intel one. I have tried it, it doesn't physically fit. So there's nothing actually holding it in place. Now, due to the fact that these AM4 brackets are spring-loaded, you know what's gonna happen. As soon as you put any pressure on this, 
that is basically going to push that out the back and you're going to lose it on the floor. Now obviously this isn't a great start, but it does get a little bit worse. So actually in the instructions it does show with the AM4 mountings with the very small dog leg which comes out the, the ends as being pointing outward, which yeah is quite often the case. But sadly, due to the way that these actual pillars are drilled out, they physically will not fit actually on the cooler where it's supposed to go. So in theory, if those were a dog leg out, it would be that way round, and you'd put it on something like that, or possibly like that. And you probably can't see it, but the screw holes just purely, simply do not match up. So that's okay, you think, well, yeah, that'll work either way. So if we just spin it around 180 degrees, then we can actually put it on. So it does show in the instruction manual that you screw the screws in from underneath, basically heat pipe side, which in that position there would kind of work. It isn't particularly even, but it would hold it in place. If you put it into that position there, that is perfectly flat and you could screw into that very easily. So my predicament is, do I actually go by the instructions in the manual? I have looked at other YouTube videos and no one seems to have covered this in any great depth. But my concern is if I have the, the pillar mounted underneath there, where it's actually very easy to install, sorry, that way around, for those of you that are going to scream at the TV. So if I put it that way around, again, it's not, not ideal, but they are showing definitely that this screw, the tiny little screw, is screwed in from underneath. Now there's no thread actually in this section at all. It's purely just drilled through to allow a pass through. So because the fact that there, the thread is kind of poking out through there, I'm pretty confident that it's got to go on the top and then you screw from the bottom upwards. And that would then give you probably about another two to possibly three millimeters of extra metal there to give you a bit more tension on the processor. Now being my processor is roughly about 350, 400 pounds worth. I'm not overly keen on killing it. So I'm going to try it this way and see what happens. I'm pretty sure if we do it the other way around and screw underneath, I don't think there's going to be enough mounting pressure and it will affect cooling badly. But it's only about two millimeters and there are, they are spring loaded, so that should take up some tension. So yeah, I'm very confused. The instructions are, I can only say piss poor. That is my honest thing. I don't know how it's managed to get to the point of actually sending these things out with the instructions being this bad and basically for the end user essentially having to guess or modify their installation just to install this thing. Now yes, it is cheap, I get that, and it may perform absolutely amazing, which for the hassle involved, I hope it certainly does. But really, this isn't good enough. It does need a much better installation. Now, after I've done this video and I've done the tests, etc., if it turns out that it is actually a very good cooler, very quiet, works well, etc. I will make a specific standalone video purely of the installation process from start to finish, just so people can feel confident that this is going to fit their system and it's going to be installed correctly. So yeah, we're not quite at that point yet because I haven't tested it. So that is the next thing to do. So we've seen all the mounting hardware, we've seen the cooler itself, we've seen the possible installation issues that we may come across in the installation guide. So uh, yeah, screwdriver time. Okay, so we've done the installation and uh, as I it suspected the bars did go on the top and the screws screw up from underneath and the installation actually was pretty straightforward using the standard AM4 backplate went together very easily. Now with my Ryzen 5 3600 I actually bottled out of using my own system. I figured I'll use this one just a little bit easier to film and with the Ryzen 5 3600 with a all core overclock of 4174 across all six cores and with a voltage of around about 1.275 we managed to get a Cinebench 23 score of around about 9,400, which is uh, a lot better than the stock settings. And temperatures wise, we didn't go over 63 degrees. And the ambient temperature in the room is around about 23, 24. The kind of under no load situation, so basically just the system idling with a few programs in the background, we're looking around about 32, 33 degrees. So as far as I'm concerned, that is definitely a great result. So installation was okay, results were okay. The one thing that lets it down obviously is the installation manual for some people that may catch you uh, unawares. 
and you may find that the process is not fitting properly or just basically the whole situation getting out of hand and you're probably sending it back because it doesn't fit properly. So we will definitely do a follow-up video with a proper installation guide of this particular cooler. But certainly, if you're looking at getting an addressable RGB 120mm tower cooler and you're looking at spending in around the £20 mark, and you don't mind waiting a little bit for a delivery to turn up from AliExpress or Banggood or wherever it may be, the Dark Flash Dark Air is certainly one to look out for. One thing I should have mentioned as well is the noise profile. Now, I did measure it with my iPhone actually using the dB meter and in the room just normally with the fans on all the other PCs and stuff going, we're looking at somewhere in around about 35 to 40 dB. Now, under full load, that was hitting around about 50 dB from around about 18 inches away, which is kind of like over here somewhere. So certainly it isn't loud, it doesn't sound particularly loud and no louder than any of the other fans in the system when under full load. And in idle situations, it's actually quieter than the PSU fan and the other fans in the machine. So definitely it is exceptionally quiet and I would certainly go as far to say it's pretty much silent in regular normal idle use. But under load, obviously it does get a little bit noisier, but certainly it isn't distracting or obnoxious. So definitely one to look out for. If you want links for it, there will be some in the video description below. They're not affiliated links as far as I can tell. So yeah, just go for it and knock yourself out if you want to get one of these coolers. Definitely well worth the money if you're paying around about the 20 to maybe 25 pounds mark. And certainly gives other coolers like the Freezer 34 and that kind of thing a really good run for their money. So let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. In the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.